And welcome to the regular Lighthouse Point City Commission meeting of January 22nd, 2019. We'll have an invocation by Father Thomas from St. Paul, the Apostle Catholic Church. Lord our God, we are very grateful and thankful to you. You have showered lots of blessing in your life. And also I pray for the people who gathered here. And also I pray for the various dignitaries sitting here. Lord, shower your blessing upon them so that they may be able to make wise and apt decision for the well-being and upliftment of the people who live in this city. We ask all these prayers in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Call the meeting to order. You can place the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mayor Trost. Here. Commission President Joffe. Here. Commission Vice President Mocker. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Long. Here. Commissioner Van Busker. Here. City Attorney Cirillo. Here. City Administrator Levitsky. Here. Finance Director DePaulo. Here. Fire Chief Gilmartin. Here. Police Chief Licata. Here. Public Works Director Tram. Here. Recreation Director Leasing. Here. And Library Director Kinsap. Otherwise, we're all accounted for. All right, sounds good. The first item on our agenda is we have an honored guest here, um, a friend in Northern Broward County and now a friend to a much larger part of Northern Broward County. Broward County Commissioner Lamar Fisher is here to, I guess, formally introduce us, but I think we all know. So, Commissioner Fisher, come on up. Um, to the Mayor and the President and the Commissioners, uh, thank you so much for having me tonight. Uh, I just wanted to come by and just say, I'm so proud to represent you. Uh, when I first decided to run for this position and give up my mayorship in Pompano Beach, my number one goal was to represent you. And I have eight cities now that I can be able to represent. It's elected along with all the residents behind me and those who might be listening. So I just wanted to come by as I did visit each city and just to say hello once again. Thank you for your support. And we have already hit the ground running, uh, not only as the mayor, when I was able to meet with your mayor, on other issues, or we are now meeting with other county issues, and so we're going to hopefully continue that working relationship, and I just want to be there for you. So don't hesitate to even call, no matter what it is, I don't care what it is, you have my cell phone, I am there to serve you. So please, please, make me the promise that you'll call me. Okay? Will do. Yeah, right. Thank you Thank you for taking the time. And, uh, and we'll see you soon. All right. God bless. Thank That's you. Good. Thank, Thank you, you. Commissioner Fisher. Uh, next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes for the regular meeting of January 8th, 2019. Commissioner, have you got a chance to review? Seeing no issues, I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of January 8th. I'll second the motion. We have a motion. We have a second on approval of the January 8th minutes. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Finance Director DePaulo, Treasurer's report, please. Good evening. General fund has three million three hundred seventy-eight thousand six hundred forty dollars and seventy-two cents. Cleanup deposits thirty-three thousand six hundred dollars and no cents. Garbage and trash fund one million six hundred nineteen thousand eight hundred fifty-two dollars and ten cents. Special purpose funds two million nine hundred thirty thousand fifteen dollars and twenty-eight cents. Stormwater utility fund five hundred thirty-four thousand sixty dollars and twenty-eight cents. Debt service fund three hundred fifty-one thousand three hundred seventy-seven dollars and thirty-two cents. Contingency fund five million four hundred eighty-three thousand seven hundred thirty-eight dollars and no cents. General fund encumbrances, $332,963.31. Total all funds, $14,664,257.01. Questions for Finance Director DePaulo, Commissioner Walker. I noticed in your report on the Mary Barker Fund that you sent out this week that there was money that was not spent. Is that use it or lose it? If we don't use it in a year, is it go back into the fund, or how does that work? Yeah, if, uh, I mean, that, I may be just... It just we haven't really discussed this, but yeah. the reasonable way to look at it is you approve, the, the amount you could approve, you could spend based on the trust and how we accept the money was 5% of the balance as of January 1st. If you don't spend that 5, if you decide to only spend 10,000 of it, if you give authorization for that much, the remainder goes back, but then in the next year you can still only spend 5% of whatever was in the fund as of January 1st. So Which it's not really like that money carries over and then you can spend that on top of the next year's money. If that's correct. Right. Okay. So. 
And that seems to be the trend. There was money there that was available, but it wasn't all spent. So that goes back into the into the trust. Correct. And then and then five percent of whatever the January first balance of then the last year or the beginning of this year is now available. Okay. Wait. So, so I just got that. I so got so that. basically, it goes back to the principal. Exactly. And the principal gets larger. Yep. Which then ultimately will roll off, hopefully, higher returns, generate higher money. Yeah. But, but the thing I always struggled with is the thing I thought is I think there was like 530. I, I can't remember the number. 500 uh, above 500 thousand dollars as of December 31st, 2018. If we don't spend any of what's available to us, and on December 31st, 2019, the balance falls below 500 thousand dollars, then we are not able to spend anything in, tw in 2020. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. I just want to make sure I understand. There's a, there's a floor, floor, and then there's a – if it earns, and then if it creates a percentage of that earnings that you can spend, or you can not spend it and hope that it continues to grow. But the, the, the fiduciary of that is re, when we – if we do not spend at some point, they will reinvest that. And to Mr. Long's point, yeah. it, you hope it grows right. over It's time. also a hedge against inflation. Right. Because 20 years from now, 500,000 is not going to buy with 500,000 buying now. So, you know, you roll off the interest, that will, you know, continue to grow if it goes to six hundred, seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, so you're, you're pacing with inflation and hopefully outpacing inflation. The power of compounding. Yeah, I, I guess my, my question was, remembering doing budgets back in corporate, that if I didn't use that money by the end of the year, I lost it. And I couldn't use it to justify additional money in the next year. So the question I had was, if there was, let's say, 20000 left over, could that be used toward capital that would save us from borrowing some money? No. 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 Each, the way that the way the, uh, it's each year is recalculated. Yeah. yeah. The bars we set each year depending on what the balance is. And yeah. So it is used previous year. So if you didn't use it, it stated yes. in that formula, and if the market went up or down, that that money would have still been counted in determining what was available the next year. So it's not like it's lost. It's just that it's not. You know, I'm it's just thinking about the bigger money product. that we don't have to borrow in a in a bond if we let's say we're going to put a bathroom in, save us the money of a bathroom. We would just need to allow, I think, over the course of time, that money to get to the balance where you could allocate it. We'll probably only able to take a certain percentage so, of that. Yeah. Okay. But once the balance gets above a certain amount, I don't remember what the amount is, maybe six hundred thousand, there's an enhancement that she's allowed to spend more. Yes. And I believe that's what Chris, that's what Christie has expressed to me in the past that she's trying to get it above six hundred thousand because she can spend more than five percent once it goes over six hundred thousand for a significant yeah. project. And that was yeah. her goal. And I'm not challenging the strategy. I'm just we we had been talking before yep. the bond about being creative about where we get resources and. Just wondered if that's money lost, but that's a good strategy if we can get it above the 600. Inch. And it's it's prudent from a fiscal yeah. point of view. Okay, that's the only question I have. Anything else for the finance director to follow? Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Public comments and requests regarding agenda items. There are six items that are listed on our agenda this evening. Agendas are available on the back, unless you get another drill. Um, if you'd like to come up and address any of these six items, uh, come up. You have three minutes. State your name and address, and you'll be permitted to address them. Seeing none, I'll close public comment and request regarding agenda items. No reports from city administration. No department reports, no reports from the city attorney. We have a planning and zoning meeting February 5th, 2019. Code enforcement meeting February 19th, 2019. Community appearance February 21st, 2019. Special magistrate February 6th. Marine advisory February 7th. We have no unfinished business. The first item of new business is an author to authorize the expenditure of federal forfeiture funds for the upgrade of police department records management system software and to replace six computers. Chief Licata. Good evening, Commissioners. Tonight I'm asking that you authorize the expenditure of federal forfeiture funds to upgrade our police department records management system software and to replace six computers. Uh, the FBI Criminal Justice Information Services security requirements <coughs> mandate that all law enforcement agencies computers be upgraded to operate with Windows 10 software by 2020. The police department currently has six computers 
that operate with Windows 7 software and are in need of replacement. The new computers will be installed with the new Windows 10 software. The current version of our Police Department USA software records management system will soon be out of compliance with FBI CGIS requirements and our records management system needs to be upgraded to version 8 in order to be compliant. The new computers that will we need to buy, the six new computers, will not operate with the records management system as it currently exists, so we need to do the two in conjunction with one another. The records management system needs to be upgraded to version 8 to work with the computers and vice versa. Uh, you have a spreadsheet uh, in front of you that, uh, that spells out what we're looking to do. The full amount that we're requesting, 15546 will come completely from the Federal Forfeiture State Contraband Fund to upgrade the Police Department Records Management System and to replace six computers. Tonight, uh, requesting the City Commission approval for the expenditure of 15546 in Federal State Forfeiture Contraband Funds for the pur purpose of uh, purchasing the law enforcement equipment and the necessary software upgrades for law enforcement operations. One thing I will add, too, that uh, we have probably another 25 computers that are not in need of replacement but will need to be upgraded uh, to Windows 10 next year. That will be part of my uh, federal forfeiture request during the budget process uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, just, Ross, one thing for um, if you a lot of computers that were purchased in the last two years, two to three years actually, probably come with built-in Windows 10 upgrades available, and we just need to check with George and make sure we can see if we can use any of that. So I just went through that with my professional office, and uh, we were able to upgrade everything with no problems. Well, we've done a complete inventory of all of our computers with their help, that they actually did it, and mm -hmm. uh, they gave us a list of those that have to be replaced, and the others are all going to be able to be upgraded. Okay. So that's what our plan is. Question, other questions for Chief O'Connor? <coughs> right. Sorry. Go ahead. I would just say I would just hope that obviously when we spend this type of money on computers that we're getting the latest and greatest computers because I would hate to see us skimp on a computer or something that, you know, those things, they change pretty much every hour. <laughs> They're out of date. You know, you buy it today, it's out of date tomorrow. But I just make sure that we're getting the best possible. I know with our IT department, hopefully that they've had the ability to expand and contract it and be able to do their things that they could do with a computer by in memory and such. So that's all I ask for is make sure we get the top line so we could survive for a while with these. We typically keep our computers uh, three to five years. Uh, in the past, we've kept them longer, and uh, they do a good job of picking out uh, the features and the upgrades that we need, so I'm not concerned about uh, not having appropriate software on computers and computers. Two, two quick things, and I'm not going to get nitpick this, but did we look into leasing? Like my like my my firm for our computers, like we we lease. Like if we looked into that, it may maybe something to look into leasing, and then every three four years you get upgraded. And I don't know if the cost it's cost effective, but something maybe to look into. I never have. Um, the recommendation always from our IT is to buy a place when we need them. Okay. Okay. So in some cases, like I said, we keep them longer than. Uh, then what my sounds like it. as long as they're working properly, we try and make the best use of our equipment. And then, so this is a supplement, so this wasn't in your, or just, this wasn't in the original it fiscal wasn't. 2018 forfeiture? To be perfectly honest with you, I probably have enough in my forfeiture request from the budget back in June, but I didn't specifically ask gotcha. for upgrading the records management system. I have to make a request from the commission in order to spend that money, so at the time, uh, it was just an oversight. It wasn't included in uh, in the budget back then, so we're making that request now. Okay. We got nothing else. If there is no other questions, I would uh, offer a motion to authorize the expenditure of federal forfeiture funds for the upgrade of the police department record management system and replacement of six computers as I'll requested. I'll second that motion. We have a motion. We have a second on the request from our police chief. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank, Thank you, you chief. Thank you. Chief. Item number two, waive the bid process and approve the purchase of one Ford F-550 cabin chassis with a dump bed utilizing Florida Sheriff's Association contract and declare something to be surplus. Public Works Director Tram. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, 
I'm here before you to ask you to waive the bid process and approve the purchase of one F550 chassis cab and dump trash bed, utilizing the Florida Sheriff's Association contract and declare one public works vehicle, similar vehicle as surplus property. The public works department is, uh, has a 1993 Chevy 3500 HD chassis with dump bed that does not run and it does not stop. So, uh, <laughs> additionally, <laughs> you can do it wrong. either way, it's just not selling good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Either way, you're bad at waiting for him to sell it to yeah, us. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, this doesn't suck. Does right. it go? Yeah. And it doesn't. It's stop. the Fred Flintstone mobile. <laughs> yeah. So clearly, it's beyond its useful lifespan, uh, and presently, it's an eyesore. Um, we got an estimate last year for repairs and to get it roadworthy and safe, and it exceeded $21,000 for a new bed and, and, and chassis repairs. Uh, in the past, the City Commission has approved use of the Florida Sheriff's Association contract for vehicles. Uh, I got an estimate from the participating dealership at $48,239 for an F550 with a bright wheelbase. A uh, new dump bed and the hydraulics involved with it, and a couple of safety features, including uh, factory installed four corner strobes. Um, I've attached the proposal from Cog and Ford. These vehicles come from Jacksonville. They drop deliver them, they drive them down here and deliver them. Uh, the financial impact as stated was $48,239. We anticipated the purchase in this year's uh, fiscal year budget. Uh, I budgeted $52,000, so I was pleasantly surprised it came in a little under that. So at this time, I would ask you to uh, consider the, the approval to waive the bid process and purchase this vehicle. Questions for Public Works Director? Is it diesel or gas? It's gas. It's gas. Okay, that's what I thought. I saw the credit. That's why you probably priced out diesel and versus. And for our use, the di diesel's not justified. Yeah. It's okay. increased maintenance, and we're not hauling a you know anything heavy, which is what you need the diesel torque for. So. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. I know, and we've done this in the past with the um, sheriff's association contract. But have we ever gone to say like? Shannon and said, you want to try to beat this? I priced it through Ford, and that's where my other estimate came from. And we've also used the state term contract, which is some very similarly priced, but they didn't offer, offer that uh, model of vehicle. But no, I've never approached Mr. Sheehan to say, here's what we can get. I mean, I just love to use local merchants whenever possible. I don't know if it's even conceivable. We've done that in the past. Yeah. We've looked for Good. local vendors. For instance, uh, Pompano Ford, they're, they're the owner of Pompano Ford up in New Jersey, I think. Uh, they call it. They put on $1,000 no matter what every time they sell a vehicle. So Pompano Ford cannot compete any time we buy new vehicles. Okay. And we've gone to the end. I'm just glad we've tried in the past. And is this, you know, is this Florida, you know, when you're piggybacking on a contract, are they under, I don't know enough about that kind of level, but are they, like, obligated to, how does that work? Are they, like, obligated to give, like, the lowest price or mass? Is that yes, it's an open bid process, that probably nationwide. Okay. Um, and the state vendor wins this open bidding con uh, uh, contract. It's basically who offers the biggest discount. There's retail price, and it works the same way with, uh, all of our other equipment as well, sizable, not weed whackers, but like if it was a tractor or something like that, there's all kinds of equipment um, through the state term contract and the sheriff's office contracts. Just for their all for kinds their of things. A, a good deal on it. Okay. Commissioner Long. There's no other questions? Oh, okay. uh, I'd like to make a motion to waive the bid process, approve the first one F. Uh, 550 cabin chassis with dump bed utilizing the uh, Sheriff's Association contract and declaring the uh, public works vehicle, which is the 1993 3500 HD surplus property to get it off our property and move <laughs> on. But uh, the price is not to exceed $48,239,000. Second. We have a motion and a second by Commissioner Johnson. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next item on our agenda, agenda item number four, resolution of reappointing members to the Code Enforcement Board. City Clerk. Oh, no, number three. Number oh, three. three. Oh, public hearing, sorry. 
Thank you. I like the way he's moving it from me. Second right. reading and public hearing of an ordinance amending the Florida Municipal Trust Fund defined benefit plan and trust for police officers and firefighters. City Attorney Cirillo, sorry. Mr. President, <laughs> members of the City Commission, this is second reading and public hearing of this ordinance that would amend the Florida Municipal Trust Fund defined benefit plan and trust for police officers and firefighters. You approve it on first reading with a change which has been made to clarify that the interest is at an annual rate of 5%. Motion to read. Second. In ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, providing for modifications for Florida Municipal Trust Fund defined benefits plan and trust for the police officers and firefighters of the City of Lighthouse Point adoption agreement, providing for complex severability and an effective date. This is a public hearing. If you would like to come up and address this item, Ordinance 2019-0970 regarding police and fire pension, come forward, state your name and address. You'll have three minutes to speak. And welcome to public hearing. Seeing no one approaching, we are going to close public hearing. Discussion by the commissioners. Motion we have a motion <laughs> to pass Resolute Ordinance 2019-0970 by Commissioner Johnson, seconded by Commissioner Long. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes 5-0. Now we can do your Now we can do them. Now you can do them. I could have. I want to get those people back on the code enforcement board. Item number four, resolution of reappointing members of the code enforcement board. City clerk. Thank you. Uh, the term of office for code enforcement board members Diane Bell and Robin Thompson expires next month in February. Both members have been contacted are, and are willing to serve again for another three-year term. We have no vacancies on the board at this time, so I'd like to recommend that the City Commission adopt the resolution reappointing both of these members to the Code Enforcement Board for a three-year term. A motion to read. Motion to read. Second. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, reappointing Diane Bell as an alternate member and Robin Thompson as a regular member of the Code Enforcement Board, providing board members with a term of office and providing for an effective date. Discussion? Yeah, I I was looking at the attendance of the people here, and uh, uh, attendance is really poor on some of them, including one of the ones that are about to be placed. Uh, maybe there's a reason for it that I'm not aware of, but... Um, one person was present three times, absent four. Another was present two, absent five. Present one, absent six. I don't, I don't get that. Well, Diane, Diane Bill is an alternate. Well, no, I didn't count Diane. I know she's an alternate. But uh, I, just, I looked down on the bottom on the, the 18th, January through December of 18, and... Does it cause an issue? Uh, a lot of A's. I mean, <laughs> has it caused any, any issues recently over the past year or year or two with a quorum? No. I don't know. No. I did speak with Tony, the clerk for the board, and she said she rarely has a problem getting enough members to attend to make a quorum. And I guess Mr. Thompson is very involved with elections, so he did have a lot of training this year for our elections, and that's why he did miss. He's a worker. Right. Wow. He's, he's one of the supervisors for the precinct, so he has extra training that he has to attend. But she said that that was the reason he did miss quite a few meetings this past year. All of them but one. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the prior year, you didn't miss any. Further discussion? Yeah, I mean, I just, maybe, I'm, I'm sure you've already talked to him. Does, I know Robin's probably right across the street in the library right now. That's how important it is to yeah, see if you're in Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? Seeing no further discussion, I would like to make a resolution reappoint the members of the Code Enforcement Board. Second. We have a motion. We have a second on reappointment of certain members of the Code Enforcement Board. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Number five, resolution awarding the bid and approving an agreement with Green Effect Inc. for Tennis Center Landscaping Services as advertised by IRP. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. As we know, the tennis centers are much needed updating for landscape and irrigation. The existing landscaping was planted several years ago and has been plagued by disease and improper placement as well as limitations of the current irrigation lines. This landscape project is part of the plan for the renovation of the tennis center and the surrounding areas to enhance and update the facility. 
There was a selection committee that consisted of myself and Public Works Director Schramm, and we selected Green Effect Inc. as the most responsible and responsive lowest bidder. And we would recommend the City Commission to adopt the resolution awarding the bid and approving the agreement with Green Effect. Motion to read. Yes. Second. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Lighthouse Point, Florida, awarding the bid to Green Effect Inc. and approving an agreement for Tennis Center Landscape Services, RFP number 2018-013, authorizing the expenditure of funds, authorizing appropriate city officials to execute the agreements and all necessary documents, and providing for an effective date. Discussion? I, I, sorry, I just can you. I, it's all spelled out here, but mm -hmm. me not being the most visual person, can you kind of be able to picture it? Can you kind of explain what what's going to happen here? For, for, for getting for forty-eight grand? Or sure. Forty-four grand. <clears throat> picture the main east-west sidewalk area, the existing south fence area, and the existing west fence area. Okay. Those are going to be the main areas that we're going to concentrate on. So this is going to entail removing everything that's in the middle. There's a lot of shrubbery that's been in there, and uh, tennis members don't like it at all. And uh, we're going to basically add some irrigation lines so we can make sure anything we put in there gets, you know, probably lives. irrigated lives. and lives. <laughs> and then we're going to be putting in some nice different modernized landscaping along with some stone instead of mulch that gets uh, faded and gray with the, the existing clay that sometimes goes through there. So it's going to look really nice, great update to the whole facility. And like I said, if you look around, the, especially the south end, we have sort of like a hit or miss of a bush and a plant or a tree, and we're going to make it all consistent and whole. So it's going to be really nice looking when we're all said and done. And the biggest difference, what we could see with the two, was that one was very uh, had a much higher price for taking out the removal and the changing of the irrigation lines. So for the actual vegetation coming in, they were pretty similar, but that was the biggest difference in the price that we saw. Any else questions? If uh, there's no other questions, I would offer a motion to approve the resolution to award the bid to Green Effect uh, and approve the agreement for Tennis Center Landscape Services, authorizing the expenditure of funds and so forth. Second. So motion. We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. When can we expect that to be completed? It's supposed to be tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. That'd be nice. Item number six: Resolution approving an amendment to the interlocal agreement and sublease between the City of Pompano Beach and the City of Lighthouse Point for the use of Exchange Club Park property for dredging. Yes, sir. And members of the commission, I'm here before you again this evening to talk about dredging, the next step in the process uh, to get Exchange Club Park approved and used as a uh, dredge tra uh, spoil transfer area. We have a verbal uh, okay from the property owner, which is the Florida Inland Navigation District, to use the property. Um, in, uh, the city of Pompano Beach has a lease with the Florida Inland Navigation District to use the property for green space and park purposes, and we have an interlocal agreement with City of Pompano Beach to also use that property for the same benefit. So in order for us to use it for dredge spoils transfer, we need a sublease with the City of Pompano Beach. So I'm here before you tonight to present that, um, and uh, the amendment and sublease specifies the proposed usage. I have here a project schedule window. Unfortunately, I've been unable to get a commitment from the dredger uh, regarding a start date. Uh, so I'm here before you tonight to ask for approval of this document in uh, principle um, for city staff and the city attorney to add commencement dates sometime in the near future when we can get a solid response from the dredger. Um, the City of Pompano Beach will uh, review this in their commission once we have it complete with the dates, and once it's approved by them, we should be very near a go to start our project finally. So uh, we have some other terms in there. The park will be closed during the dredge spoils transfer to keep the public safe. Um, and to protect the construction equipment. We will continue with our regular maintenance activities. We won't let the front become a weed farm. You know, we'll, we'll continue with the maintenance of the bathroom buildings and, of course, the beach on a daily basis because no matter 
whether we close the gate or not, people are still going to rack up in their boats there over the weekend, and they always use the garbage cans. They unload their boats and things in the garbage cans, so we'll make sure those stay emptied and clean. Um, the dredge will use a hopper barge, take the materials out of the city, pull it up there, unload them into the upland, and bring them up into the main spoils area in the middle where they can spread them out, let them uh, aerate and dry. If we pay for ultimate disposal by the ton, so it's better to dispose of dry material than wet. Um, the city of Pompano Beach was very concerned about uh, odors that might result. I think some people feel it's going to be like a big dead carcass, um, but uh, we've got commitments from the dredger that they would have some materials on hand, namely agricultural lime that they can, that's typically used in farm stalls uh, to mitigate some of the odor, and we've also agreed that the odor determination will be will be determined by a, a, an agreement of Lighthouse Point and City of Pompano Beach staff. What does that um, mean? Whether that means the lime on there? Whether well, no. That means we'll, if we get a complaint from the nearby neighborhood, we'll meet in that neighborhood and say, "Yeah, it really stinks," or "I don't smell anything." Um, I, you know, some people might not just not like the activity and complain about a smell. So we'll have a, an agreement between the staffs that. Yes, it smells. We'll make the um, dredger use the lime as a mitigator. If that doesn't work, they've guaranteed they'll start a haul-out process within 24 hours. So they'll get rid of it. The hauler. Yes. Cool. Do you want a motion? Do you want to do a motion to read? Motion to read. So, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Idaho, Point, Florida, approving an amendment to an local agreement and sublease between the City of Pompano Beach and the City of Idaho, Point, for use at the Exchange Club Park <laughs> property for dredging spoils transfer, authorizing the State Administration to agree to modifications on dates in the sublease and other non-substantive changes if necessary, and to execute the necessary documents providing for an effective date. Commissioners? Just a quick question. I, I drove out there yesterday or the day before just to look at it to see how things were were coming together. It uh, looks really nice, but I was wondering, the barge pulls up exactly where to unload, and then do they take it by truck to the middle? They're not going to go down those paths that's further west. No. They're going to go right to the middle? That's correct. Part of that black fence will have to come out. So mm -hmm. we I did a site visit with the dredger, and there's – a bush about in the middle of the beach area, and most right. people use the area to the left of this bush, so they're going to try to pull up to the right. A little I mean, further south. A little further south, and they put a turbidity, turbidity barrier around the hopper barge, and they use what's called a long reach backhoe. Basically, a track hoe sits up on the land, it's got a real long arm, and they'll load it into dump trucks. And so, dump trucks will actually take it to the middle. Yeah, they'll probably have one off road dump truck and fill it up. It'll go out to the middle, it'll dump, it'll come back. Okay. How, how many how many uh, truckloads are we anticipating are going to go out of the city? Well, we've estimated approximately 10,000 cubic yards. So, um, you know, when they're hauling out, they'll be using over-the-road dump trucks. It depends on the size of the truck. The truck could be 20 yards. So it'll be quite a few trucks. Not all at once. Right. We're go we've asked for two haul-outs. You know, they'll... They'll um, stage and spread for 30 days and then do a haul out and then do that again. It will be quite a few trucks on haul out days. You may want to change the parking configuration mm. there. Whether it will oh, be closed. Yeah, it will be closed. They'll, they'll, knowing the, how these operations work, there will be enough room on the inside for quite a few trucks to stage on the inside. And all the materials there, it's hard. Because uh, there was a load of coral rock out there that just got spread around. That's what the whole middle area was a huge mountain of coral rock. I think it was Hillsborough Inlet. Wow. Okay. If there's no other questions, I will offer a motion to uh, approve the resolution of uh, interlocal agreement and the sublease between the city of Pompano Beach and Lighthouse Point for use in the Exchange Club Park for dredge schools. Second that. One motion. We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. That brings us to the end of our agenda items, and uh, we now are uh, at the time for public comments or requests from the floor regarding anything. Um, so come forward, state your name and address if you'd like to address the commission. About three minutes.
Well, that's good baseball, right? <laughs> Among other things, actually. Everett Marshall, 2821 Northeast 44th Street. Question of the day, batting cage. <laughs> we need our batting cage update. Is there a batting cage update? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, spoke to Becky this morning. She is uh, finalizing the uh, bids, the informal bids she's gotten, and she needs to confirm some things with the contractors. She also needs to confirm with the uh, city engineer the plan of where it's going to be located. Doesn't interfere with the future drainage plan for uh, Danwick Park, and I believe she was going to reach out to uh, Carrie today about that. And uh, hopefully we'll have something on the agenda in February on this. Perfect. Second thing, um, the things that were voted on at the last election, the changes that are going to be made, when is the commission going to take up those those things? Which changes are you referring the stuff to? stuff that came out of the, uh, well, the planning. The, RF, the RFP is in process for the bond. Right. Um, that is, uh, for, um, there's also an RFP in the works for the project manager. Um, as far as the uh, planning and zoning, that will be done prior to the next reappointment. The uh, commission changes, I believe, uh, that take effect just by virtue of the vote. And uh, what was the other one? The setting the dates and oh, time okay. to uh, change the annual meeting. Oh, the annual meetings. That happens automatically as a result. Well, we, so we'll have enabling ordinances prior to March of next year. We'll get. I, I intended to get with Jennifer um, and go over those ordinances that will be done over the next couple of weeks. So we can start bringing, them, or at least bringing the thoughts. Because planning and zoning board is later this month, later this year. Right. Of course, you don't have an election this year, so you have time on that. But we want to go ahead and right. get this going. We just so we're going. Jennifer and I are going to get together, sit down, and map out timeline for that. Then one other thing that you you discussed when that you appointed the two people for the code board and, and uh, Sandy, you questioned about people being absent and things like that. I I was recently appointed to the board. I've been there. You know, that's your job to be there, and that's fine. And some guys can't cannot. That's fine. But it would be interesting to go back and find out how the attendance was prior to the meetings being changed to. 6.30 from 7.30 and see if some of those people that you've now, you know, you've seen in your list that have missed because the meeting is now at 6.30 instead of 7.30. But they did that on their own. They decided. There's a big, they, they went back they, and they forth. They went back and forth. Right. And, and, right. and, and they did. And, 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 were, and yeah. it was, I think it was a very close vote that yeah, it, was. it did get changed. Mm -hmm. So and whoever showed up that day, they kept switching back and forth. <laughs> right. Yes. So if you went back and looked at that, maybe that's something that uh, affects it. Might have been. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else? We'll close public comment. Commissioners. Anybody got anything? Yeah, I got a couple things actually. Uh, this, before I knew that there was a new thing in. Uh, Microsoft about clutter versus spam and different other hideawayable uh, email addresses. I went to the Chamber of Commerce today uh, to have a discussion to make sure they had my email address right, which actually didn't have it right anyway. But besides that, I met up with one of their, uh, their business development executives. His name is John Gabler. And uh, he was discussing about how he wanted to get more involved the city of Lighthouse Point businesses. And we always discuss up here about being business friendly and so on and so forth. So. I would just see if we're interested in having the newly formed chamber that includes Lighthouse Point, Pompano Beach, and Margate to come in here and make a little presentation, talk about themselves so we can make sure that we are allowing our businesses to understand that although it's not the city of Lighthouse Point Chamber of Commerce, they definitely want to be partake in uh, promoting a local business as the city of Lighthouse Point and also helping with the uh, business development between all three cities and making sure that everybody knows what everybody does. Uh, didn't know if we were interested in having some sort of presentation. Doesn't have to be anytime soon. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce coming here and just mentioning and talking for a couple minutes. I'd like them to give, send me emails. That would be a good start as far yeah. as I'm concerned because I don't, I haven't gotten a single check, word. Check your clutter folder. I did after I mentioned it a couple of meetings ago. I went home and looked at spam and there's just 
<laughs> oh, no, it's a different folder. Oh, clutter. There it is. <laughs> I don't even know what clutter is. I don't know. Exactly. Well, clutter is a folder that's set up by Microsoft Outlook 365. And what it does is it takes um, uh, mail that comes from a server that is not individually addressed and aggregates them. Um, and you should get an email about once a week saying, Clutter has intercepted new messages and give you a link to those new messages and tell you what those new messages are um, briefly as an overview. But it's, it serves to avoid spam that is server generated from mail lists mm -hmm. as opposed to individually generated from, from an individual. So you know that you, on AOL you can't get Office 365. I was on the phone with them today speaking. Everything that I get from an Office 365 account doesn't come to me, it gets bounced back. So maybe if they're sending things through Microsoft 365, that's why I'm not getting Office 365 AOL. is Office what, 365. what the City of Lighthouse Point uses. That's your, so that's your lighthousepoint.com email. Office, really? Office 365, just like my professional office is Office 365. So I don't get it on that email. By the way, when you go to clutter, it goes trash, and then you got to clear it out of trash. So it's right. I, look, I, I looked at my right. RJ Gator, but I look at the city one, too, and I never get it. When you're retired, my emails are yeah. when you're retired, you definitely have time to look through all this stuff. Sure, you don't look through trash. Trash. I read clutter like that. I don't see anything. I'm excited oh, every day about clutter. Who do you have clutter? He reads all of them. Nothing in this folder. All right. I, I'm interested. So, I, I, have to, oh, I, I would just suggest that everyone get with George, and he can explain it to you. I, I have the same thing at my professional office, so it was kind of seamless for me. Okay. But it does create confusion. There's no doubt about it if you're not using Office 365. The other thing I've found is if I'm getting it on my phone, it's very different than getting it on my computer. Yes. Uh, night and day. So... Uh, Unfortunately, I have to check clutter on my computer. Okay. All right. There's also a thing called conversation history, and you can't get rid of it. It won't go away. So we can talk about that offline. I don't know how to get rid of it. Do you have conversation history? I, yeah, I do. Yeah, it won't go away. Okay. Anyway, for Does anybody have any objection to inviting it at point to having the chamber here? No, no problem. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, then I will, if you don't mind, or I'll, the mayor myself will reach out to them to have a to figure out of a good date mm -hmm. that we have an easy evening for them to swing by here. Let's ask Gene Mc McIntyre to attend that too. Okay. The new executive director. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple other things. I know that most everybody saw Becky's email this afternoon about the two Lighthouse Point teams that did very well for the NFL flight football in Orlando tournament. We had one team win. We had one team place second place. Thought that was an awesome. Awesome, awesome thing that occurred for the citizens, or for phrase that the citizens' children of White House Point, but also the fact that Becky has uh, brought in the NFL flag football and how has it's taken our teams and up the level and the coaching and so on and so forth. So I think that it'd be nice to invite both teams in for the uh, for like a little award ceremony or at least a little recognition. I saw a picture. I guess some of them even got Super Bowl rings because it was a Super Bowl. The NFL flag football is pretty much in bling that they got, so it's pretty interesting. So if there's no objection, I'd like to see Becky bring in those folks for that possibility. Mm -hmm. I have the same thought. Maybe it's funny. It'd be nice. It's a great idea. On the same note, i got a couple, Commissioner, President Joffe. Uh, Kevin Mendez actually lives in the city, and I read an article the other day that he is the, since 1924, he is the seventh the second person in the state to be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back diving champion for the state of Florida. Uh, I don't know Mr. Mendez, but I'm guessing that he obviously is a great diver, and he is a resident of the Seal House Point. That's that was, Junior. Huh? That's Junior. Junior? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I, I, His dad's Kevin. He's oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, then you also know him. So I read the article, and I was very intrigued by the fact that they even had diving in 1924 or whenever the other guy that did the three-peat. So I thought that would be nice if we invited him at a separate meeting or maybe the same meeting to come in and uh, commend him for his accolades and his uh, expertise at diving. So that was another thing. If anybody has any objections to that, I brought a lot. I anybody know. else you want to invite? Commissioner well, 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 we're, we're going to continuously down the list. We're just checking boxes right now, all right? And then uh, last, well, I'll give a, I'll let you have some thunder there too. But ultimately, I don't know if everybody saw it in email. There was a discussion about numbering of buildings over in the marina area. There was a young lady or a person that was uh, complaining that the buildings weren't numbered in her development. Uh, I know the mayor did a lot of legwork the other day and had some discussion with the fire chief and the police chief and the fact the way that the 911 system is working, 
they're utilizing GPS location uh, versus actual addresses. Uh, so it appears that a majority of that stuff's going to be just GP, GPS location. So I actually, actually, actually spoke to uh, Mr. Lebisky about it, and uh, he had spoken to the chief already. Um, long story short, um, the, the way the system works, and we can invite the chief up to expound on it a little bit, is everything's based on GPS locations, so it's not based on a letter on the side of the building, as the lady had suggested. Um, I've also learned that she has had some uh, challenges dealing with her condo board, and I don't know if that's part of the impetus behind it, but uh, she is correct. There is no state law that I'm aware of, nor any county ordinance that would require the buildings to be placarded, and we don't require it in my house plan. You know, it wouldn't fall under our, I'm just thinking, I, I'm sure you looked at it. It wouldn't fall under, we have the requirement that your numbers, mm -hmm. that's just, is that tailored? It's not. This is, this is just on a building. Right, it's just A, B, C, D. Exactly. Okay. All right. One more. Can I go one more? Thank you. Thank you. I pre listen, I have a lot. Just, I want to remind everybody, since it's a big topic of the Van Buskirk household, that we have the Lighthouse Point Keepers Day dinner coming up. We will not be seeing each other before that and for that upcoming Dolce, what's that? Dolce V. Sweet by the Sea. Yes, Dolce by the Sea. Sweet Life by the Sea. I can promise you the decorations between Becky and my wife are already in the works. But please come out. I know it's going to be an amazing evening for all the residents of Lighthouse Point and also to honor our 2019 keepers. So please make sure to buy your tickets now. Got two tables. You got two tables? Beautiful. So just want to remind everybody and everybody out there watching, of course, to join and purchase your Keeper's Day dinner tickets. Do you want to invite everybody at Keeper's Day dinner to a commission meeting? <laughs> if you would like, I'll be more than happy to get up there and MC for that one. How's that? Sorry. Are you done, Commissioner Van Buskirk? I, I, I'm tapping out. I'll let you go ahead and run with the rest of it. Other commissioners might have stuff they want to say, too. Any other commissioner or yeah. mayor? Commissioner Ma. came to mind when Lamar, Commissioner Lamar Fisher, was up, and I didn't want to bring it up and spoil his formal introduction, but came to mind. We have an issue with the county, do we not, over a lawsuit involving a bridge repair? And if, and I was thinking we weren't happy with the cooperation we were getting from CHIP or the county, or at least the county, in terms of helping us out with some adjudication on that, but we're going forward with a lawsuit that never got resolved. Is that something that Lamar could help us with? It's actually in the courts right now. The lawsuit's been filed. Um, we have filed suit against the develop the uh, contractor and the subcontractor, and it's working its way through the court system. The county is uh, not is it only involved as an ancillary at this point in time, because the, the, the reality of the situation is that the um, it appears the contractor is primarily at fault. And Mike, I don't know if I should say anything more than that. I think that's that's pretty accurate. I could update you if you want on, on it, but it, we haven't had any lack of cooperation, let's put it that way, from the county, and okay. we don't have any formal claim from the county. Are they a party to the lawsuit that we no. filed? No. Are we anticipated that either the contractor or the sub will bring the county? They have, yeah. they, they have, have, have not yet. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess my point was is, you know, Lamar has asked us to promise to keep him informed and use him if we need him and if we do that's one issue that's before that sort of ancillary to the county that we might ask for some yeah i mean courtesy or whatever. At, at some point the involvement of the county at either mediation or uh, through witness or document production or testimony is going to be um needed it's going to they're going to be brought in as in some role form or fashion at some point in order to resolve this, hopefully amicably, but at the very least in a trial. Well, I guess my point would be the sooner we let Lamar know this is an issue that's out there festering, then maybe he could be of some help to us at some point in the process. Right. Lamar is aware of the litigation. Okay. I didn't want to bring it up and, you know, we just came here to pour for it, say hi. <laughs> and then whip that on. So. Yeah, we just got an update today from the lawyer. You know, okay. It's litigation and... It just, it's, you know, it takes, a, it takes a long time, and they filed a pleading, which we, our, our lawyers have filed a motion to strike, and they're trying to coordinate a hearing, and the only time they can get hearings for the amount of time they need is, like, May. And until they get this motion, the motion to strike from the fences ever filed, until they get that resolved, the case can't be what's called an issue, and then set for trial, mediation, everything else. 
and because of the, the way court schedules work and, and attorney schedules work and the time you need it, um, some judges have availability sooner than others. And apparently in this division, the dates they're looking at are early May to get this motion mm -hmm. right heard. So I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, we can talk. Separately. Yeah, I'll talk. I, uh, that's the information. That's the latest information we got as of today. Okay. Do we know? Do you know off the top of your head what judges are from? I, I do not know off the top of my head. I okay. can get that information. Okay. Okay. No, just, uh, you know, Lamar's a guy that makes things happen and gets things done, and, you know, that's a, a resource for us, and we should be prepared to take advantage of it when it when the opportunities are there. That's all I have. Okay. Down there, Commissioners? Nick? I was going to say, you mentioned Keeper's Day. We do have the parade and all the stuff. We have a band um, Saturday night. Who's the band? 807 Band. We have a band today. Okay. What type of band? Oh, uh, they do a little bit of everything, 80s, 90s, and today. Okay. Sounds like okay. a good Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. Sounds like a good band. Sounds like a good band. Sounds like a And don't we have a run as well? Yes, we do. Oh, a run. Yeah, I heard it was sold out. No, you still can register. You can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And, of course, we have a 5K run. But also then we move into, and, and that's a lot for adults, but some kids as well. But just for the kids, we have Sports Day, which may be Earl's um, grand grandson. <laughs> well, well it's maybe future. Uh, we'll be participating in as well as by kids and everything else. And you can sign up and encourage everyone to sign up online. And it is free in the Lighthouse Point Recreation Portal. But it's important they sign up so they know how many kids are coming and age groups. So it's a fun event. I know my kids look forward to it each and every year, and as well as the Van Buskirks. And, the jaw fees as well. So, where do you sign up online? Uh, on the rec department uh, rec website. Um, it has a portal right there, and pop it in. Might have to create an account, which is probably a good thing to do in the future. There, anything? Kyle took two of mine, so uh, it's fine. You know, he stole, he stole he stole my thunder, but that's okay. I'll let him do it. Um, I was glad, I was glad he picked up on those two things. Um, uh, just one other thing. Um, our uh, Boy Scout troop this weekend completed a 75-mile bike ride Ooh, over wow. a two-day period of time in Central Florida and got to camp out on uh, Sunday night, well, Saturday night and Sunday night, but Saturday, Sunday night was a cold night. They woke up with frost all over their tents in, in Floral City, Florida. Ooh. And uh, we had a couple boys with chattering uh, teeth because uh, they underpacked, shall we say. So uh, we had a three minutes of extra stuff during the night to get them warm. All right. I think that's everything. And Becky, I need a question for you after me, if I could. Thanks. Okay. Did you mention the mayor biked off those 75 miles? The mayor did bike the oh, entire 75 miles. <laughs> our, public works, our public works director biked the entire 75 miles. He actually was with the lead pack. I, was, I, 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 I had the, the pleasure of bringing up the rear. Um, not because I intended to, because we did have one young man who decided to do the entire bike trip. Like that. <laughs> so he actually did 110 miles. Oh, right. <laughs> I think the All right. Well, I think that is. Uh, we'll call that a meeting, and we will consider ourselves. A meeting. Thank you.